in mind again, all of this is for man. All this for man's benefit. And God got an order to everything he do. He said when he created the fruit trees, everything is after their kind. So an apple tree not supposed to produce oranges, etc. Everything is after its kind. So you shouldn't mix and mingle stuff. He warned you of that. Go ahead. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind. Everything come forth after his kind. Go ahead. And the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself. And the seed was in itself where God didn't have to keep making them over and over again. It would reproduce itself. That's how wise he is. But go ahead. After his kind, uh -huh. and God saw that it was good. Uh -huh. And the evening and the morning were the third day. See, now he did that on the third day. All this is for man's benefit. From day one, light. From day two, the firmament or heaven that divided the water. Now, he didn't say nothing else yet about the waters above the heaven, did he? He just started talking about the waters below. He gathered them together, made the dry land appear, made the seas over here, and then he put vegetation in the earth. All this for man. So now we're going to go a little farther. Go to uh, Psalm 148. Let's make sure we didn't misread something and get some more back up. See, but what you should realize is that all that we're reading about this great creation that God has embarked on, it's all really for one purpose. That's why the title is The Creation of God. We're not just talking about what God has created. We're talking about what God intends to create with all of this creation. The creation of God. And that is what it says, God. God is creating God with all of this. All of this is leading us to God making God. That's what he's doing. Psalm 148 and 1. Go ahead. Praise ye the Lord. Uh-huh. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Uh-huh. Praise him in the heights. Praise him from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Go ahead. Praise ye him, all his angels. Uh-huh. Praise ye him, all his hosts. He said, let everything praise the Lord. Go ahead. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Uh -huh. Praise him, all ye stars of light. See, we saw he made that, right? He said, let everything praise the Lord. Sun and moon. Those are two great lights he put out there. We read that already to show the distinction between the light that he said, let there be light in the beginning on day one, and then when he created the two great lights to give light upon the earth. That's what, what we see by it. He said, praise ye him all his angels, praise him all his hosts, praise ye him sun and moon, praise him all stars of light. So he talked about all that he's created, but he's going to tell you something else. Go ahead. Praise him, ye heavens of heaven. See, people don't know it's a heaven, it's heavens of heavens. It's more than one heaven. And he said, let the heavens of heavens praise him. Go ahead. And ye waters that be above the heavens. You mean it's waters above some heavens? Well, we already knew that, didn't we? Because he, he put the firmament, which he called heaven, and he left some water above it, didn't he? He said, divide the waters which were above it and waters which were below it. And we saw him work and pull the waters below it together, right? But still, that we still got waters above, don't we? That's right. He didn't say nothing else about that, but they got to be there, right? That's why the scientists was right. They said, we, we, we can detect if you go so far in outer space, you're going to run into some water. And they are right. Hmm. Keep going if you want to. You better have a swimsuit. Hmm. You're going to hit some water. He just told you, right? He said... Verse 4, praise him, ye heavens of heavens. That's the top of the line, heaven. But he also said, and, not just heaven to heaven, ye waters that be above the heaven. It's some waters above some heavens, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But now let's go further. Go to uh, Ephesians 4. See, this where if people understood God's creation, they wouldn't think that, our goal is to die and go to heaven through the sky somewhere. They wouldn't think that. They would know that the plan is for the kingdom of heaven to come here. It's going to be heaven all right, but it's going to be right here. You ain't got to go nowhere to get to this heaven. All you got to do is stick around. Psalm, I'm sorry, uh, Ephesians 4. 
See, that's why Jesus could make a statement when he came in, in uh, John 3 and 13. He said, no man had to send it up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Talking about himself. Nobody went up to heaven but him. Then somebody say, well, it say Elijah was taken up into heaven before Jesus came. Yeah, but he didn't go to, obviously he didn't go where Jesus was talking about because Jesus said no man. He meant that, right? But that you will understand that if you understand that it's more than one heaven to begin with. It's a heaven of heavens. That's what Jesus was referring to. That's where the father is way up beyond the waters and everything. He in the heaven of heavens. Jesus sitting on his right hand. All the angels there. That's the heaven of heaven. But as you work your way down, you got some water, don't you? That's right. And as you work your way down through the water, you got something else called heaven, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's where the sun and the moon is at. That's the sky. When you're in an airplane, you're in heaven. I go to heaven a lot. Because oh. that's heaven. But now, look at it. Ephesians 4 and verse 8. Ephesians 4 and verse 8. Go ahead. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. Notice it said, when he ascended up on high. Jesus said, no man has ascended up to heaven but him. He came down from heaven. He's the only one went back to that heaven, the heaven of heavens. But now when you go in the sky like Elijah, he just went in the sky back in those days. He went in the sky, got transported somewhere in a chariot a fiery chariot of angels. He just got moved somewhere else. That's all that happened. And it's evident that that's what happened because the people that was living in Elijah's time in, in uh, 2 Kings, the first chapter, first and second chapter, they knew, first of all, that he was about to get taken off the scene. They knew it before it happened because they had the spirit. Mm -hmm. They knew he was about to be taken off the scene. Then when he disappeared in the fiery chariot, right, if they knew he was about to get taken, and then when he got taken, they also knew that he wasn't taken nowhere where they couldn't find him because they said, let us go look for him. They begged, the, they begged the prophet after Elijah, Elisha. They begged him. They said, look, let us send 50 men to go find him because the spirit probably dropped him off on some mountain or in some valley somewhere. And he said, man, you ain't going to find him. But they knew he was still around somewhere. Right. He said, you ain't going to find him. Don't. And they bugged. They said, let's go look. Let's go look. He said, man, go look. Send 50 of them and y'all look for them. They came back and said, we ain't found. But that means he could have been found, right? Right. See, he wasn't going nowhere. He wasn't going off the earth. He just went like we would go in an airplane somewhere else. Wasn't no airplanes. The Lord just had them angels move him. That's all it was. But he couldn't have went to where Jesus was talking about because Jesus couldn't have lied in John 3 and 13. Right. He said, no man hath ascended up to heaven but the one that came down from heaven talking about himself. See, he knew where he came from. He knew where he was going. So that's why here in Ephesians 4, he said, when he ascended up on high, what finished that? Wherefore, he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. See, that's what Jesus did when he went back to heaven. Go ahead. Now that he ascended, what is it but he that, that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? See, before he ascended back to heaven, he had to die and go in the grave for three days and three nights. So he did that first. He descended before he ascended into the lower parts of the earth. First, he came down from heaven in the first place. He walked around on the earth for three and a half years, for 33 and a half years. He did his ministry for three and a half years. Then when he died, he got buried in the lower parts of the earth. That's what that's referring to, right? He descended first into the lower parts of the earth. But now what happened? Verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. Up far above how many heavens? All heavens. All heavens. See, that lets you know it's more than one, right? You don't say all unless it's more than one, right? And where did Jesus go? He went up far above all heavens. See, he went past the water. He went far above all heavens. That what? That he might feel all things. That he might feel all things. Go to 2 Corinthians 12 now. 2 Corinthians 12. See, so we're looking at what all that God is doing. This is a great, this is a grand creation. But it's all for one purpose. 
It's all leading us to one place. 2 Corinthians 12 now. See, we ain't going to deal with this too much because we got a lesson to deal with, basically, the three heavens. Because he's going to tell you here it's three. It's 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 1. 1 and 2 is all we're going to read. 2 Corinthians 12 and 1 and 2. Okay, go ahead. It is not expedient for me to doubtless to, it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. Uh -huh. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Uh -huh. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Uh -huh. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Uh -huh. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. Uh -huh. God know it. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. See, now he wasn't sure what was going on with this vision he seen of the Lord, but he knew the bottom line. He said, such a one caught up to what heaven? To the, the third heaven. The third heaven. So that lets you know it's more than one heaven. People talk about heaven, heaven, heaven. They think it's just one place up through the sky that you're supposed to go to. No, he said somebody was caught up to the third heaven. That's the heaven of heavens. That's the heaven no man has went to. But that's not the plan of God. The plan of God is for the kingdom of heaven to come here. That's why he said, thy kingdom come, right? Thy will be done in heaven, in earth, as it is in heaven. So when his will is done in earth as it is in heaven, this will be heaven right here. This will be the heaven. This is the heaven we need to be striving for. But he's showing you that in this creation. But now, let's go to Genesis 1. See, he lets you know everything you need to be concerned about. Back to Genesis 1 again. Back to Genesis 1. And we're not going to read. We read, but we'll just read through it again because we read it earlier. But we'll read through it again and make sure you, you grasp because that's heaven right up in the sky, but that's not the third heaven. That's not the heaven of heaven. Verse 14, we're going to throw this in. Genesis 1 and verse 14. Go ahead. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Uh -huh. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and and for days and years. So now these lights, go ahead, verse 15. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, uh -huh. and it was so. See, this is the light we see by, right? So, so either that light in Genesis uh, 1 and 5 at the beginning that he made got to refer to something else, or he just wasted his time, right? And we know God is not in the wasting time business. But this is the light we see by. He said, let them be for lights in the firm of heaven to give light upon earth. But they in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. That divider that he put between the water, right? Mm -hmm. That's where these lights are at. So that lets you know again, it's the water above where these two great lights and the stars are at, the sun and the moon. It's water above that. So man that been to the moon, tell him to keep going until he hits some water. Then he went a little farther. But go ahead. Verse 16. Uh-huh. And God made two light, made two great light. Uh-huh. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Go ahead. He made the stars also. Go ahead. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Uh-huh. And to rule over the day and over the night. Uh-huh. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Uh-huh. Now he, he set them two great lights, the sun and the moon and the stars. Go ahead. And the evening and the morning were the four, fourth day. He did that on the fourth day. Now keep reading. Verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that, that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Okay. Now he creating the birds. He already created the vegetation in the earth, but now he said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life. So his water is bringing forth the fish and also the birds that fly. Notice where the birds fly, above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So birds in heaven all the time, ain't they? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which, which the waters 
brought forth abundantly uh -huh. after their kind, mm -hmm. and every wing fell after his kind, uh -huh. and God saw that it was good. Uh -huh. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl, and let fowl multiply in the earth. Okay, he brought the fish, and he brought the birds, and he made them all after their kind. And they reproduced themselves. 